After learning the box stitch in part 1 of this tutorial, we're now going to move on to the barrel, which has already been started. So if you haven't yet started the box stitch, you'll need to do that. Okay. So now you can see the box pattern emerging. And we're going to move on to what's called the barrel. The barrel is round. And remember when I said never cross anything, keep everything parallel and square? Well, the barrel's the opposite. Everything needs to be on a diagonal. So when you take this bottom pink string, you don't cross it over like that. You cross it over on top of the other pink string. And you cross this pink string to the bottom of the other pink string. Now see how these are parallel to each other, but they're on a diagonal to the box. So when you go to weave them, the easiest way to remember what to do is to just take one of the black strings and to make sure that you trap the open string closest to it and go through the loop after that and then trap the closest uh, open string to that and go through the loop and your stitch will be on a diagonal to the last one. And then you're going to go on a di diagonal again. So instead of going like that, like box, make sure you're on the lower side of the pink. You should feel kind of like you're doing the wrong thing, kind of like you're going towards that black loop. And then the other pink one, just parallel, but still not squared with the stitch below. And you're going to take this string and look and see which is the closest open end. So you're going to trap that and go through the loop and then trap the last open one. Go through the loop. And pull tight. You'll see a spiral start to emerge, so you're going to need to do a few more stitches, and I'll just do those quickly. And now you can definitely see this spiral pattern emerging in the colors. And I'll do one more stitch and then I'll show you how to uh, switch directions in your spiral. And that's something you can use to make some really cool patterns. Um, kind of like V's and stuff and it's uh, going to translate as you learn more and more different kinds of lanyard making. So this is spiraling I guess to the right. If you want to spiral to the left all you have to do is to do a box stitch. So if you remember the box stitch it's the one where you keep everything parallel. So instead of crossing over you just make sure that the pinks are like that, the black strings, 
trap both of those ends. Go through loops. Okay. So you can't tell yet that it's changing directions. But um, when you start again with the barrel, which I will do fast. Okay, this is going to be my last stitch here because you can definitely see the difference in direction. The turn, okay? And now I will show you how to end this. You want to leave enough room, probably, depending on what material you're using, five inches of uh, gimp or at least like six inches of paracord in order to end this properly without having trouble. And what you're going to do is you're going to make a very loose box stitch. So. By now, you probably have that down, right? And you will see that you can wrap around the stitch of the corresponding color next to one of the ends that's, you know, it's through a loop, but it is an end of the string. You just wrap around the, the loop and through the, the hole in the top. So around the, the loop and through the hole in the top. And you can leave that loose. And then turn and you'll see. You can go around the loop and through the hole right in the center. You'll go around that loop and up through the hole in the center. It kind of braids everything. So last one, around the black loop and up through the hole in the center. And now grab everything and pull. This is the hardest part to pull because there are a few, few layers of loose strings and stuff. But then you're done. You could use this paracord as a keychain or um, leather lacing is kind of nice. And I was experimenting earlier and there will be more about this and how to do this later with a gold chain and um, that looks pretty nice. So these are kind of just de decorative objects but they're definitely useful in some ways and they can actually look cool instead of just looking like something that a kid made at camp. So I hope you enjoyed this. The next tutorial is going to show you how to make the double box and the tornado and further stitches with better materials. Thank you for watching this video. 
You can get more videos like this on YouTube or photo tutorials on my blog, thework is getting to me.blogspot.com. Bye.